Well, hi guys, it's Alyssa. Long time no see. I hope you've all been doing well. Uh, some of you may know that I recently moved, so that's kind of where I've been for the last couple of weeks, so I'm sorry about the lack of uploads. I am going to do my best to get back to my weekly upload schedule. I know I said that at the beginning of the month, and it hasn't really worked out so far. Um, but anyway, today's reading is kind of related to the season. We are getting into that time of year where a lot of us start spending more time with our families, a lot of us go home for the holidays, and all of that jazz. So the question we're asking today is, is your person going to be your life partner. Um, so this could be somebody that you're just interested in, this could be a kind of new relationship, or an established one that you're just curious about, you know, where it's gonna go down the road. Um, is this person who you're gonna share a big part of your life with, or not? Uh, so we've got four groups here to choose from. Group one is the white candle. Group two is the pink cactus thing. Group three is the orange candle. And group four is the ghost candle holder. Isn't it cute? Um, so while you guys are making your choices, I just want to uh, say that I hope everybody had a good Halloween. Um, let me know in the comments what you did for Halloween, if you did anything special. I was Wednesday Adams, and I handed out candy to trick-or-treaters, and it was pretty fun. Um, so I hope you all had an enjoyable Halloween as well. And if you still haven't decided, go ahead and pause the video, because we are going to get started here. <laughs> Oh, my cactus left some dirt on the table. Okay, so group one, white candle. I think for you guys, I'm going to use the golden tarot. So let's find out, group one, if your person is going to be your life partner. We have the ace of wands. We have the nine of wands. I don't think I'm going to take all of those cards, but if any of them come out again, then I will. We've got the moon here. We have the four of cups. We have judgment. And let's get one more. Ace of Cups. And I'm going to pull out an Oracle card as a clarifier. Okay, we got two. We have Flirt and Forgiving and Learning. Okay, interesting. So, um, let's see. Right away, I get this feeling like there's a lot of passion between you and the person you're thinking about. A lot of fiery, intense, passionate energy, a lot of physical chemistry. Um, I feel like that's a big emphasis for this relationship. A big aspect of it, I should say. With the flirt card being here, you know, this is, this is a very lighthearted, um, kind of non-committal sort of energy. Uh, so there is this, I, I do get this feeling like this is something that either isn't very, I, I feel like this is either something quite new or it's something that is, that's never really had a chance to develop too much. So, like, if you've known this person for a while, or if you've been with this person for a while, I'm getting a little bit of stagnation. Because it seems to me like 
this connection hasn't had a chance to evolve very much past, you know, the initial feelings of like attraction and, and chemistry and, and that kind of thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, with judgment being here, I do get the sense that there's a lot of intense feelings between you and this person. Um, because judgment is, I mean, it's an intense card. It talks about like awakenings, rebirth. This is, this is change and transformation. So there are intense feelings. There is love between you and this person, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how effective your relationship is. And what I mean by that is like, I, I get this feeling that you and your person, whoever you're thinking about, may not have the best communication to each other or with each other. Um, the moon talks about the unknown. It talks about something being hidden. Uh, it can talk about secrets uh, being illuminated. But in this context, I'm feeling as though you and your person aren't, there, there's some kind of disconnect. There's something, like the two of you just aren't quite on the same page. You might be just a couple pages off from each other, but there's a little bit of a disconnect between you. Um, it seems like there's a little bit of a communication block, possibly. Um, the Four of Cups here talks about disappointment, apathy, uh, boredom. This implies to me that you and this person maybe have a tendency to just kind of let problems simmer, um, to, not, to not really adequately address issues in your relationship and just kind of ignore them until they become impossible to ignore. Do you follow me? Um, I, I do get this feeling like there's conflict within this connection. Um, I mean, there's conflict in every relationship to some extent, you know, from time to time. But with the Nine of Wands here, this card is really like a tired, exhausted, weary energy. The person on this card looks like they've been beaten up a little bit. So it, it, this makes me think that you and the person you're thinking about are butting heads fairly often. And I get a little bit of a codependent kind of vibe from the two of you. Or, or, or there's a big possibility that this connection could become codependent. Uh, so maybe just the way that your relationship is, that's just something that you guys might easily fall into, a, a dynamic you might easily fall into if you're not careful. Um, the forgiving and learning card, you know, this is, this is also indicative of there being some, some ups and downs in this relationship, um, things that need to be forgiven and learned from. Again, I, I get this feeling like there's, not a lot of uh, communication that's really effective and there's not a lot of effort made to adequately address problems that arise. The card says, as you release and heal the past, your experience, you experience more love in your present moment. So this kind of tells me that you or your person or maybe both of you have a tendency to hold on to things hold on to conflicts, hold on to negative emotions. And when you hold on to things, when you don't address them adequately and you don't move on from them, then resentment starts to build up. So I'm getting here that this person could be your life partner, but if that's gonna happen, then the two of you got to figure out how to talk to each other more effectively and how to, you know, how to overcome obstacles, how to work together to move, you know, to work past things, to work through 
issues together. Because problems can't be ignored forever. <clears throat> the Ace of Cups, this is talking about new beginnings, particularly in terms of love and relationships. Um, so again, this is telling me there's a lot of love between the two of you. There's a lot of love between the two of you, but I think I think you guys might need a, a lesson in, in compromise and... Oh gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Conflict resolution, possibly, um, in order for this to work out long term. Because I, I feel as though the way things are between you now, if things don't change, then I do get the sense that this connection is going to end up breaking apart. Um, so if you don't want that to happen, then I think those things I was just talking about need to be implemented. I feel like this relationship is really meant to be a learning experience for you. So, you know, try to make the most of it. Um, and, <clears throat> sorry, the possibilities for you and this person are really quite endless. There's, you know, there's unlimited potential here, but it's going to take work to achieve, you know, this lasting, uh, long-term, stable life partner outcome. Do you know what I'm saying? It's going to take work to get to that. This is, I, I feel like this is, a relationship that's not not necessarily going to be easy to maintain over time okay um, I feel as though it's going to be pretty consistently it, it, it's gonna be like the two of you having to make the choice to keep going does that make sense um, so, so this really isn't a very clear-cut answer. Um, like I said, if things remain as they are between you now, then probably not. But if you guys can kind of find a balance in your relationship and, and learn to compromise and open up to each other a bit more, then, then yes, I think that is very possible for the two of you. I think you definitely could end up uh, sharing your lives together. So that's what I have for you guys, group one. A um, little bit, little bit uh, complicated for our first reading of the day. But I hope that this was insightful. I hope this uh, resonated with you. If not, um, maybe try a different pile. Uh, this is just a general reading. So take what applies to you and your situation and leave the rest behind. Thank you for joining me today. I hope I see you next time, guys. We are going to move on now to group number two, which was the little pink cactus. So for you guys, group two, I think I'm going to use the Santa Muerte Tarot. This is really, this is pretty much my go-to deck uh, just in my everyday use. So group two is your person that you're thinking about going to be your life partner. Whoa. So the first card we have here is the eight of pentacles. This card is about stability. This is a pretty promising energy to start off with. The Emperor. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Queen of Swords. The Wheel of Fortune. Let's get a couple more. Page of Swords, whoa, Six of Swords, and the Hierophant. And let me get one or two Oracle cards.
healing family issues. Okay, group two. So, just right off the bat, I want to say yes. Um, because like I said, the Eight of Pentacles here really is about stability. Um, the Pentacles cards I associate a lot with commitment, consistency. And this card in particular is really about hard work. It's about putting forth the effort to achieve some kind of goal, working towards something that you want. So this is really showing me like a willingness uh, to maintain your relationship with this person over time. This is showing me you and them being willing and able to invest over time to, you know, continue putting work into this. So um, with the Emperor card here as well, this card can represent a husband or father figure. Um, it's also associated with stability, commitment, like I said, with the Eight of Pentacles. Um, so there is a little bit of a familial energy to this card as well, with it having that association, like I just said, with, you know, a, a husband or father figure. Um, the, let's see, what do I want to talk about? Um... Your Oracle card, Healing Family Issues, again, we have family, the idea of family cropping up here. And this card in particular is about healing. So I do get the impression that, oh, okay. Some of you who picked this group maybe came from a, a rough background. Maybe you had a, a difficult upbringing. And you might be worried about your own future in terms of like, basically some of you I feel are concerned about being like your parents or being like the people who raised you. Um, so maybe you want to have children, but you're also afraid of turning out, you know, like, like that. Um, afraid of treating your kids the way that you were treated, something like that. I am getting, you know, some some anxiety and some some fear surrounding the idea of family, even though it seems to me like that's something that the majority of you are looking for. Um, so <clears throat> With the Queen of Swords being here, this card is kind of an icy, distant energy. This is not a very emotional card. This is logic, reason. Um, the Queen of Swords is kind of a harsh uh, individual. So I get the sense that some of you guys who picked this group might be... You might be projecting some of this type of energy towards this person that you're thinking about. And that may be because you are a little bit a little bit fearful of how things might turn out. Um, I get the sense that a lot of you are afraid of repeating a cycle. And the Wheel of Fortune talks about cycles. Um, the Page of Swords here is kind of interesting. This card. It's about communication, it's about messages coming through. It can also represent um, somebody who's kind of keeping an eye on another person. Uh, sometimes it can indicate, you know, gossip or rumors going around. In this context, I feel as though you know, pages are the first of the court cards, and so they do have this underdeveloped, kind of inexperienced or immature sort of energy to them. And so, in the context of this reading, I feel like this is, this might be how you are feeling uh, about this situation, or about the possibility of settling down with this person you're thinking of you might be feeling kind of like, mm, 
kind of scared like like maybe you're not ready or you know you're you're not going to be you're not going to be a good partner or a good parent or whatever um there's just this energy of being kind of scared being kind of scared and what they're saying is that you don't need to be scared. Um, if you focus on healing yourself and letting go of your past, healing those old wounds, healing that emotional trauma, or you know whatever it is that you're carrying around that that relates to your childhood or relates to your family. If you do that, then you will be breaking out of this cycle. You will be ending the cycle, and you're not going to repeat it with your own family. Because we have the Six of Swords here, this is about moving forward into calmer waters. This is about peaceful resolutions. This is about unity, togetherness. And the last card to come out was the Hierophant. This is one of the marriage cards. Okay, this is commitment and stability and security. So group two, I really feel like whoever you're thinking of definitely could be your life partner. Um, but they're asking you to please take care of yourself and work on healing whatever it is you're carrying around with you. And... If you can do that, then, you know, the odds of success with this person are just going to skyrocket. And you're not going to have to worry about repeating the cycle. Okay? Um, so, yeah. Group two. Um, I know that was kind of a, kind of a specific message. Um... So I hope this resonated with you. Um, take what applies to you in your situation and leave the rest behind. This is just general. Um, but I feel like this reading was specifically for a handful of people. And I hope that they, I hope that they get a chance to, to hear it. Um, so that's what I have for you guys group two. I hope this, I hope this resonated with you. I hope this was helpful. Um, Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope I see you next time. We're going to move on now to group number three, which was the orange candle. So let's see. Group three, what deck am I going to use for you guys? I'm thinking about this one. So this is the Tarot of Pagan Cats. This is the mini version. I've actually never used this deck on my channel before. I've had it for a little while now. Um, it was sent to me by my friend, Nikki. So thank you, Nikki, if you happen to see this part of the video. Um, okay. Group three. Is your person going to be your life partner? We have here the Page of Pentacles. These cards are so small. The Three of Cups. Oops. It's a little too many cards. Whoa. Let me look at this one. Ten of Wands. I feel like I need to take that one because it was like separate from the other cards that fell out. And it fell out first. Um, Knight of Cups. Nine of Pentacles. 
Oh, King of Cups. And the Nine of Cups. So we've got a few Cups cards here. Actually, most of these are Cups. Cups, 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 Cups. Um, let me pull out one or two Oracle cards, and then I will talk about these. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We have Deception, and we have Retreat. Huh. Okay. So guys, group three, this is kind of interesting. So your tarot cards are really quite positive. <laughs> um, the first one that we have here is the Page of Pentacles. So the Page of Pentacles talks about, I mean, pentacles in general. I wish my camera would focus. Hello, please focus, please. Okay, maybe not. Um, Pentacles in general are associated with stability, commitment. Um, they correspond to the, whoa. My phone just like exploded, okay. Um, they correspond to the earth element. And so, you know, they have those types of earthy grounded qualities, right? Um, pages also tend to be messengers. They can represent offers being made. So this is indicative of an offer of commitment. Now, because it is a page, it is the first of the court cards. It does have kind of a underdeveloped kind of energy to it. So typically this would be a relatively small offer. Um, for example, an offer of, you know, just seeing each other consistently, something like that. This isn't gonna represent, you know, a, a marriage offer or anything like that, typically. Um, but we do have commitment energy and we do have stable energy. And also the Nine of Pentacles is similar. This card is, um, this card, <laughs> the Nines in the tarot typically uh, relate to wish fulfillment, um, being close to a goal, uh, close to achieving some kind of, you know, something that you want, right? Um, and so this card talks to me about like personal fulfillment. It talks about getting something that you, let me back up. This card is feeling content and satisfied with the current state of things. Sometimes this card can represent a person who is single because it does, uh, you know, it also is associated with independence and self-sufficiency. However, in this context, um, I feel like the Nine of Pentacles is really talking about you feeling quite satisfied in your relationship to the person you're thinking of. 
um, having a lot of stability with this person because again this is pentacles and this is the nine which is um, just it's one step away from the ten of pentacles and the ten of pentacles is all about security family happy home life domesticity that type of thing so we have that <laughs> we also have the nine of cups which again is associated with wish fulfillment it is about contentment having all of your needs met um, kind of feeling like you're on top of the world. You know, this cat sitting here, he's got all of these cups around him, and he's like, yeah, I'm living the life, you know? Um, so I, I get the sense that this person that you're thinking of or the person you're with is someone that you really would like to be your life partner, obviously. Um, but I almost get the sense that you're a little bit afraid of attaching yourself to that outcome too much um, because with the deception card being here and I pulled the page of cups as a clarifier um, it seems to me like you may not fully trust I want to say you may not fully trust your own feelings towards this person some of you I think are feeling as if you're deluding yourself or you're being kind of delusional or you're getting ahead of yourself you're being overly ambitious as far as this person is concerned does that make sense um some of you might be letting other people influence your thinking about this relationship so for some of you, this isn't going to apply for everybody, obviously, but for some of you, I'm getting that there are people in your life who maybe are telling you things about this person or telling you things about your relationship to them, um, kind of like discouraging you from being together with this person or, you know, telling you things about them that might not necessarily be true. Um, I just get the sense that for some of you, there are people who might be trying to drive a wedge between you and who you're thinking about. Um, but for others of you, I think that the thing that's driving that wedge is just your own maybe fear or uncertainty. I get the sense that, I get the sense that some of you don't want to really dive into this head first because you're afraid that something will happen and you'll end up getting hurt. So I, I just get this feeling that a lot of you are trying not to attach too much to this life partnership outcome because basically you're feeling like someone, someone is being deceptive. And I really don't feel like it's the person you're with or the person you're thinking about. I don't think that's the case. I mean, for, for a small, small number of you, that could be. But for the majority of you, it's somebody else is being deceptive, you know, trying to intentionally come between you, or you're deceiving yourself. Your own uncertainty, your own fear is causing you to deceive yourself. Second guess your feelings, etc. Does that make sense? Um, with the Ten of Wands being here, this card typically is about having some kind of burden that is weighing you down um you know just carrying something on your shoulders that you don't really need to uh with it being a 10 though it is also associated with completion or endings so this card can represent you know letting go of some kind of burden uh putting something down that's been weighing on you in this case i feel like this is saying that the person you're thinking about is someone who is going to help you to carry whatever burden you have um, or even, you know, take it away from you completely. So particularly in the realm of like your emotional state, um, I want to say mental health also, I feel like this person is really going to 
be there for you. I feel like this is somebody who is going to want to help you always. Who's going to always want to lighten your load and do whatever they can to make things better and easier for you. Because I do get the feeling that this person that we're talking about has a lot of love for you. I mean, we've got all these cups. We also have the King of Cups, which is unconditional love. This is this is the last card in the suit. So it has the most matured, the most developed of the cups energy. So this is like um, really strong emotions. This is a really deep bond between two people. And this is also representing somebody who has a firm grasp on their feelings. So this person knows exactly how they feel about you and they know exactly what they want from you, from your relationship. So there's no confusion. I don't think there's any confusion with this person. They know, like they know how they feel and they know what they want. They know what they're after. Um, and I think that for most of you, you know, if you are second guessing yourself, because of your own anxiety or, you know, fear of, of uh, being hurt or whatever the case may be. I feel like this person is um, wanting to, you know, try to stick it out as long as possible. I feel like this person is willing to wait for you. You know, if, if you're in a position where you're kind of holding back from them. Does that make sense? Um, it's just like this, this is somebody who's, who's willing to do whatever it takes to, to be with you and to build a life with you. The Knight of Cups is pretty similar. This is about offers of love, messages of love. Again, this is a person who loves you a lot and wants to move forward with you. Um, also the Three of Cups is about unity, togetherness, um, this is harmony. This is, again, connections, strong connections between people. Um, typically, I associate this card with friendship. However, like I said, it's, it's unity. It's wholeness. And I think that this person feels completed by you. And I think you might feel kind of completed by this person. Or, you know, that's, that's the potential here. That's where this could go if you pursue this relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, lastly, we have here the retreat card. It says it's time to disconnect from the world and we have justice. So justice is about balance. It's about fairness, um, making decisions as well. These two cards together are telling me that, you know, if you are somebody who's in a position where you're, you know, you have other people whispering in your ear or you're second guessing your feelings about this relationship or whatever the case may be, these two cards are saying that you need to pull back. You need to gain some perspective on the situation. Um, they're really suggesting that you just kind of spend time one-on-one -on -one with this person and, you know, see how it feels. Does it feel right? Does it feel natural being with this individual, talking to this individual? Um, what's your gut telling you about this relationship? Like, that's what you need to be listening to. Not your anxiety, not any other people in your life. Um, what is your gut saying? If your gut is saying yes, this is good, I like it, then, you know, I'm not seeing any reason for you to keep holding back. Definitely, definitely there's, there's, there's so much uh, potential for you too. And lots of love, lots of love. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes, if, if, you, if you allow it to be. <laughs> if you allow this person to be your life partner, then yes. Um, the key is just 
I think the key for a lot of you is going to be just to, to just let yourself embrace it. Because for some reason, you know, for whatever reason, I feel a lot of you aren't allowing yourselves to fully embrace it. I feel like you want to, but you're holding back. So if you just, if you just embrace this relationship, then I think it can definitely evolve into something really beautiful and really lasting, okay? So, um, group three, that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope this is helpful. I hope this was interesting. I hope it resonated with you. This is just a general reading, so take what applies to you and your situation and leave the rest behind. Thank you for joining me today. I hope I see you next time, guys. Bye! And lastly, we have group four, which was the ghost. The ghost. So group four, um, I think for you guys... I am going to use the Wild Unknown Tarot. Group four, is your person going to be your life partner? We've got the Three of Cups. We've got the Eight of Cups. We have the Seven of Swords. The Emperor, the Devil card. Let me get one or two more. <clears throat> The world, oh, <coughs> and the chariot, okay, and I am going to pull out one or two oracle cards, whoa, and then we'll get started with this. You deserve love. Okay, so guys, group four, what I'm seeing here is a somewhat toxic or possibly codependent relationship. I get that from the devil card. This card uh, often represents situations or connections that are dysfunctional, unhealthy for the people involved. It can talk about addiction, mental illness, codependency, etc. Um, situations where a person might just feel like they have no way out or no way forward. So this is not like, this isn't a real promising um, energy. And we also have the Eight of Cups, which typically talks about something uh, or someone walking away from something, leaving a situation or a person behind. We've got the Seven of Swords, which can indicate deception or some type of sneaky behavior. Um, I also see this as somebody hiding, um, hiding away or isolating themselves from someone else. Uh, we also have, let's see here, we also have here the Chariot card, which talks about forward movement. Um, the Chariot is a pretty neutral energy overall. It can be a good thing. It can be... A relatively bad thing depending on the context um, in the cards that come out with it for this particular reading I kind of feel like the chariot is not really representing you and your person moving forward together but I feel it's representing somebody moving forward on their own um, and you know the, the eight of cups is really kind of emphasizing that that 
energy of somebody leaving this connection behind. Um, the world card here, this card talks about endings. It talks about completion, some kind of cycle coming to a close. So um, in, I mean, broadly speaking, I feel as though the connection you're asking about is something that you are ultimately going to end up walking away from. And I do think that for the majority of you, it is going to be you, the viewer, who ends up walking away from this. We do have the Emperor card here. The Emperor uh, is associated with stability, commitment. Um, the Emperor can also represent someone who is kind of stubborn, somebody who wants to be in control, someone who likes to be in charge. Um, I feel like... Hmm, how do I want to say this? I feel like for a lot of you who chose this option, you are going to discover something about your person that is not going to sit well with you. Because, you know, the Seven of Swords, like I said, it can represent some type of deception, some kind of truth coming out, a secret being illuminated, brought to light. The Three of Cups here, um, this card can indicate third party situations. I typically don't bring that up with this card unless I feel like it's really relevant. Um, because when you say third party, some people really like flip out. Um, so a third party doesn't necessarily have to be another person who is involved. A third party can be anything that is creating a wedge between you and another person. Um, so it can be family, it can be a friend, it can be a job, it can be money, um, it can be physical distance, or another person. So I feel as though with within this particular connection, I feel as though there's going to be some type of third party that's creating a block between you and this person. Um, for some of you, you may discover that there is actually another individual who is who has their nose in this relationship um and i feel like most of you are going to i feel like most of you are going to say you know i don't have time for this i don't have time for secrets i don't have time for half truths you know I, i'm i know what i'm looking for and this isn't it and so I think a lot of you are going to kind of embody this emperor energy. Drive your chariot away from this relationship and bring it to a close. Because I think that you know that you deserve better than what this person is offering you. Okay? And I think that you will find much better than what this person is offering you. Um, and some of you might already know that this person is not going to be a good fit. You might, maybe you're just curious. Maybe that's why you're watching this. But I get that impression from, from this group that like, you know, you really know what you want. And some of you, I feel, are just looking for confirmation of something that you may already expect. Um, so if that's the case, then I hope that, I hope I was able to give you that confirmation. Um, but short answer, no. It's, this is looking like whoever you have on your mind, it's, it's not... The odds are extremely slim of, of this person turning out to be your life partner. Um, with the other readings that I did today, you know, some of them, some of the answers were kind of, you know, it could be either, but this is a pretty, this is a pretty definitive 
no, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective. Um, so group four, that's what I've got for y'all today. Uh, I hope that was helpful. I hope that was uh, insightful. I hope it resonated with you. This is just a general reading, so take what applies to you and your situation and leave the rest behind. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I hope I see you next time. Bye.